friends and welcome to today's episode of Daily Musings. So I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into the five step annual planning process that I was toying around with this year. And the first step I feel is, well I don't want to say any one step is more important than the other, but this is sort of a whether or not you're planning the year or you're doing any kind of goal setting, this one is just so crucial in terms of life functioning. And the idea is to clear space and get everything that's sitting in your brain, everything from buy milk at the grocery store to send that letter to grandma or whatever it is, just getting it all out and creating a system to keep track of all those little ideas, thoughts, projects, actions and, and tasks that you have on the go all the time. Because our heads can really only simultaneously hold so many things at the same time. Things slip through the cracks, it, it, we miss prioritize things because we're not remembering things properly and so on. So having a really good capturing system and a good sense of like organizational flow in your daily life and getting all of that dumped out of your brain, it just, it, it feels great. And actually I've had a really interesting experience since clearing out the mental clutter. So I went through this process towards the end of December when I did just like a good old fashioned brain dump, very much in the style by the way of getting things done by David Allen, which is classic personal development book. It's one of the first ones I ever read and have revisited many times. But um, I've had the, the experience, I wasn't expecting this at all. It kind of thrust my life into a little bit of chaos because I think one of the consequences of, okay, these are all the things that I want to do. I'm getting it all out of my head. And once I was able to clear the mental clutter a little bit, all of a sudden, things that maybe I wasn't, that I was sidestepping or ignoring or avoiding on an emotional level, on a character level started surfacing. It was like I was distracted by the busyness of my head. And then once I kind of quieted down the busyness, I still had a little bit of a feeling of overwhelm, which is sort of what prompted this process in the first place. It's like, I have too many things to do. I don't know how to do it all. I'm feeling just like I'm not on top of my life. So I thought this existed purely on a mental level, on a task related level. But what I started to find is once I cleared the space, these emotional things come up. Uh, I'm starting to realize my, my inadequacies and uh, my mental distortions and the you know perfectionism issues and things like that that I, I struggle with. And that's actually causing much more of my problems than the actual tasks themselves. Or it's not just a matter of mismanaging my tasks, but it's sort of the emotional status, the emotional status of my being is kind of a little bit haywire. So clearing space kind of ended up having a little bit of a chaotic effect. So I don't want to freak you out or anything, but it's really productive in the sense that if I, if I hadn't cleared the mental clutter, then maybe it would be much more difficult to recognize these emotional issues that have been plaguing me for a good chunk of my life. And then I'd just be living with this low grade um, uneasiness or uh, like a feeling that I'm out of control or that I'm not good enough or, or anything. So being able to look at that stuff more clearly um, is where I'm at right now. And that's what this process that I'm about to talk to you about uh, inspired. So hop on board. Okay. So in true getting things done fashion, one of the best things that you can do to clear space, mental space, is to just do a brain dump. So the way that I do this, so David Allen recommends taking a, like a big stack of paper, like eight and a half by 11 printer paper, whatever. And every time a task comes into your mind or something that you want to do, a book you want to read, that recipe you want to try, whatever is cluttering your mind, just put it down on a full sheet of paper. And I'm like, okay, there's a, uh, I kind of, that's a lot of paper and he has his reasons for using a full sheet. But what I did is I just, took sheets of paper, actually construction paper, because I have a lot of it, because I have a kid. Um, I just cut it up into strips and I just, I still wanted to make them big. I didn't want to make little tiny sheets because it's like if I made little tiny sheets, they're easier to lose. They kind of downsize the importance of the issues. I don't know. It just seemed, okay, I want to take David Allen's idea of using a large space for little thoughts, but you know, dial it back a little bit. I don't want to kill as many trees as I could, you know, avoid killing. So having a bunch of sheets. So I ended up creating, they're gone by now, by, uh, by the way, I've cleaned them up since I did this, but I had like a real, really thick stack of sheets by the time I was done this. So 
the way that I went through my life, um, you can find useful resources online to consider, okay, what are outstanding, uh, like, like kind of to trigger your memory of things. So you can go through your business life and think, okay, what are the projects I'm working on? You can think through all the different categories of your life, like your your career, your relationships, your pro your creative projects, um, your social life, etc. And just go through it category by category, pulling as much out of your brain as you can. And it wouldn't be surprising to come up with like, you know, one to three hundred items when you do like a complete brain dump like this. I know a lot of people have many more than that, um, but I would say, I think mine was probably somewhere in the 200 items ballpark when I did this. Another thing that I like to do is walk around my place, walk around my house, just look around. Is there anything that, like, when I'm noticing, um, oh yeah, I forgot to clean out my closet, or oh yeah, I really need to buy a new water filter, or things like, like, that's all stuff I write down. Now, there is a temptation, and David Allen notes this in Getting Things Done as well, to when you're wandering around, you're like, oh, I'll just fix that right now, or I'll just clean this closet right now, and then instead of actually doing the job of emptying your brain, you're actually just trying to solve your tasks immediately, so that's a separate step, but the idea is to just get like a full brain dump of everything that is... Uh, maybe burdening your mind and that step alone is huge but you also kind of have to have some sort of system to to process all of this so once you have your big stack of paper what I would recommend doing is have some sort of digital system to and digital I feel it just makes the most sense nowadays when David Allen originally published his book um, maybe having like a like a hard copy system might have made more sense but I, I do like to keep things digital where you can keep track of several categories of items now full a full read through of getting things done will kind of get more specific here but what I have on mine is uh, I use notion by the way notion is kind of like um, I've used Nosby in the past these are just task manage management systems notion is more of like a it's almost like you're creating uh, you can create websites and it's it's very text friendly so I like using them but anyway I have a like a next actions page which basically just lists all the next steps that I have to do like um, call the bank or whatever it is I have a projects list so anything that I'm doing that involves multiple steps so maybe um, I'm trying to think of an example uh, launch a piano course is a huge project there's a ton of steps in there so I'll have a project list with with these these bigger things that have multiple series of next actions I have a place for that I have a someday maybe list which is basically a list of anything that you're you're you want to think about later or um, isn't critical to right now in the moment so for example in my someday maybe list I have things that I want to watch things that I want to read um, podcasts that I want to listen to um, things that I want to buy for my house or uh, clothes that I want to buy anything that isn't actionable at this moment but I want to keep in my mind so I get a lot of recommendations from people so people recommend me books people recommend me TV shows movies etc and uh, what is typical when I don't have a good capturing system and this is probably most people's experiences you're like oh, okay that sounds cool then you totally forget but if you read something that someone recommends it's a great way to connect with them so I, I like primarily choosing my input based on what people recommend for me. So um, that's just how I would use a someday maybe list, anything that's not actionable. Also have a waiting for list, and the waiting for list is just uh, anytime you've sent something out into the universe, like you're waiting for a response. Like um, maybe I'm waiting for my producer to finish his notes and then get back to me or something. So I can't, I can't take action on it now, but it, it's in progress. So that's where the, the waiting for uh, list comes in. And I believe that that forms the basis of the getting things done system. There's a lot more details, like I said, but if you take your stack of 200 papers or whatever you've got and process them all one by one, adding them to one of those lists, whichever one makes the most sense. Just ask yourself, is this actionable right now? Like, do I wanna take care of this soon? Or is this something that I'm gonna put off till later? Um, do you need to think about renovating your kitchen right now? Or is that a later thing? Do you have other things that, that are taking precedence? That'll determine if you're putting it on next actions or pro uh, projects, or if you're putting it on like a someday maybe list. So basically I just, yeah, go through the whole pile and simply by having this system in place and you're checking it regularly, like you're scanning through your next actions list daily, you're scanning through your projects and your um, someday maybe lists on a weekly basis, that is a huge hunk of the getting things done system. And um, yeah, super, super useful. This is, uh, like I said, it's a really 
not, apparently it's a good way to stir up all kinds of uh, inner, it's like kicking up the dust in a sense. It's, you clear all the space and then that allows room for all the other things that have been hiding in the background to come out. It's like um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but on a, like on a mental level because uh, you've taken care of your basic needs and now all of a sudden other things that were in the periphery are coming to focus. So having this space I think is really useful not only to clear the emotional clutter, which is what I'm finding right now, that's my own personal journey of the moment, but also to um, to give you a sense of what, what goals might matter to you. Uh, it, it's almost like if you have all this mental clutter, how could you connect to your higher purpose? How could you connect to your sense of contribution to the world, to your sense of um, like, the the things that you really really want that really matter to you it's kind of hard it's like it's harder to tune into the that channel it's a like a distorted or a static radio dial so even if you're not like a goal setting kind of person just being able to clear mental space in this way um it's like it's like david allen was doing the life-changing magic of tidying up in a mental way long before uh, Marie Kondo came along and I love both books actually they're they're great so um, hopefully this was helpful to you and we'll probably 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 talk more about goals for the rest of the week so take care guys I'll talk to you later